my name is Rosie and here's a video about what's inside an atom. Assalamualaikum. Hello everyone. Ready to learn about atoms with me today? Well, if any of you are still wondering why on earth should we learn about atoms, let me tell you why. Despite their size, atoms can give you a huge impact, from a very noble intention to a disaster, just like what we see. Moreover, everything in this world is made up of atoms, from sugar crystal to the eyeball with which you're watching this video. Scientists have discovered so many kinds of atoms, and you can see them laid out on a chart called periodic table. The question now is, have you ever seen an atom? What does an atom look like? What's inside an atom? Pause the video for a sec and think about it. Have you found the answer? Truth to be told, until now, we don't have any technology yet to help us really see an atom. So how do we know that what we're told is true? Does that mean we've been lied to for a whole life? Well, no. Join me through time travel to understand how our knowledge about atoms is built even though no one has ever seen one, let alone see what's inside. Ready? Go! Throughout history, scientists and philosophers have attempted to answer those questions. As a result, they've come up with knowledge and some useful models for understanding the building blocks of our universe. We need to travel back to 400 BC to meet Democritus. Inspired when he was chopping an apple, he thought that if you keep chopping it, at one point you would reach particles so small that they are indestructible. He called them atomos. Later on, in 780, Jabir ibn Hayyan took extraction to another level. He found that fruits end up with a very pure substance compared to what is found in nature. Hundreds years later, Marian and her husband built on his work. They found that even pure substance can be broken down into smaller pieces through chemical reaction, such as water into hydrogen and oxygen. They called this element, and this led to discoveries of other substances all over the world. Later on, John Dalton added to the theory. He believed that the atom is tiny solid ball, identical to each other, but has different size with another atom. Einstein then found mathematical equation that proves not only that atom is exist, but also calculate the mass of it. Not long from that, Jean Perrin developed and proved Einstein's mathematical equation. Even in 70s, Heinrich Rohr and Gerd Benig leads the invention of scanning tunneling microscope that can scan grain of atoms. Here is the model of the scanning tunneling microscope. It uses electron tunneling to scan an atom that is fixed onto the surface. And this is an actual image from the scanning tunneling microscope, showing the actual pattern of silicon atoms arranged in the sample. Later work by Dr. Wilson then improved the data of the image. Even later, led by Dr. Arab Karian, actual light was used and resulting this image of a single nitrogen atom immobilized on a copper surface. Now, we're gonna talk about findings that proves what's inside an atom. In 1897, Sir Joseph J. Thompson discovered the electron which are negatively charged, and got a Nobel Prize, wow! He used a cathode ray tube that resulted in a new model. The theory says the electron is embedded in a positive sphere which was called the plum pudding model, because it looks like one. Later on, in 1898, Goldstein found proof of the center of atom. While observing, he found that there were rays going in the opposite direction. He called the ray as 
Canal Ray. He concluded that they were composed of positive charges. The next discovery is by Ernest Rutherford around 1911. Along with his team at Manchester University, he published the result of the famous gold foil experiment. Rutherford used alpha ray that is positively charged. According to the plum pudding model, the alpha particles should have just passed ray through the foil because atoms would be mostly empty space with some charges scattered around. But it's not. To Rutherford's surprise, some alpha particles were deflected by a lot. He concluded that an atom's positive charge was concentrated in a tiny central nucleus, and these nuclei were deflecting alpha particles that bounced off of them. He also predicted that the electrons were orbiting around the nucleus, kind of like how planets orbit the sun. That's why his model is sometimes called the planetary model. Rutherford was right about protons being in the middle with electrons around them. And you'll still see his model used today to explain the very basic of the atom. But there was one major problem with the planetary model. It predicted that orbiting electrons would lose energy in the form of radiation, which would make them spiral inward and eventually crash into the nucleus. This implied that all atoms would eventually collapse, and that's not true. So something is missing. The answer was proposed by Danish scientist Niels Bohr in 1913. He proposed an adjustment to the Rutherford model that solved this problem. Bohr's model predicted that electrons orbit at a very specific energy levels, which he called orbits. The electrons could only orbit at precisely those levels, and so they couldn't spiral inwards. An electron, yes, could switch levels, only if it absorbed or released some energy. That's explain why stable atoms didn't just collapse. Bohr's model quickly became the most popular model of an atom, and it's often used today to show the basic way that an atom is arranged. One breakthrough was made in 1932 when English scientist James Chadwick discovered that neutrons exist. Neutrons were electrically charged and they helped explain why the nucleus was so heavy. Hmm, what a history! So to sum it up, recall what we've learned. Agree? Okay, what are the subatomic particles? of atoms. Yes, they are electron, proton, and neutron. And you'll find more if you continue to learn chemistry. And here are the rest. Their mass, their charge, and their symbol. And um, one more thing I want to emphasize. This, and this, and this is not how an atom looks like. It's a model to help us understand the atom, so keep that in mind. The real atom? Well, the researchers are still working harder than it. You can be one of them, by the way. Alright, let's move to the next discussion. We know that atoms have a tiny nucleus with positively charged protons and neutrons which have no charge, as well as negatively charged electrons that are some distance away from the nucleus. Every element is a combination of some number of these three particles. The one that determines which element an atom belongs to is the proton. One proton means hydrogen, two is helium, three is lithium, and so forth. When we represent an atom, we use nuclide symbol. This will consist of one or two letters that abbreviate the element. If one letter is capitalized, if two 
the first is capitalized and the second is not. To the bottom left, we sometimes put the atomic number, which is the number of protons in the nucleus. To the upper left is the mass number. Remember that the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, which means that the number of neutrons in an atom is the mass number minus the atomic number. And if the atom has more electron or less electron than it should have had, it will show here at the upper right. Now, let's review! What is mass number present? Good job! Now, what does atomic number represent? Yes, it represents the number of proton inside nucleus. Now, what does atomic symbol mean? Correct, it's a representative of the chemical formula. Now, let's practice. Here I have a um, carbon atom. We have numbers 2, 6, and 12. The question is, how many protons does a carbon atom has? How many neutron and how many electron? You have um, 10 seconds to answer. Three, two, one. All right, let's see. The number of proton is six, as the atomic number shows. The number of neutron is six. As mass number minus atomic number is 12 minus 6, and it's equal to 6. And the last, the electron is 6, since it's a natural ion. Alhamdulillah, we're at the end of the lesson now. And inshallah, in the next lesson, we're gonna talk about atom energy levels and also atom bandings. To deepen your knowledge, you can go to the path simulation here you can learn about atom, the symbol, or even play games. You can also visit some YouTube channels such as Did It Clearly, C Show, and Professor Dave Explain. All right, so this is how the pet simulation looks like, right? Now let's hit a round of again. <laughs> let's get started. Oh, easy one. Okay, so here. There is a model of atom, and you need to find out what is the mass number of the atom. Now, the mass number is the amount of proton and also the neutron inside the nucleus. You have um, five seconds to answer. Got the answer already? All right. So actually, as you can see in the model of the atom, how many proton does the model has? One, right? And how many neutron? One. So the mass number is? Yes, that's true. It's two. Let's check it out. Yay! Great! Now let's go to the next question. Oh, now we have oxygen here. Alright, this is the mass number and this is the atomic number. Now we have to analyze the number of protons and the number of electrons. What is the charge of the oxygen? You have five seconds to answer. Got the answer already? Alright, so the answer is yes, zero. Because the number of protons and number of, of electrons are the same, it means that the atom has no charge. Now let's check it out. Yay, we got it right. Next question. We have oxygen here, alright. And we have the atomic number, eight here. The charge is minus two, negative two, and here is the mass number, we need to find out what is the mass number. Alright, five, five seconds from now. Alright, so the answer is... Yes, it's 16. How do we get 16? Well, as you know, mass number is the number of protons and neutrons inside the nucleus of an atom. So, since the protons is 8, and the neutrons is 8, 8 plus 8 is 16. Now, let's fill in this box with 16. Let's check it out. Yay! Great! Next question, we have hydrogen. The mass number is 2, the atomic number is 1, and here's the model. 
what is the charge of the atom? Five seconds from now. All right, what is your answer? <laughs> now, in this question, we need to analyze the number of electron and also the number of proton. This atom, this model, has one proton, which means plus one charge, and two electrons, which means two minus charge, right? So the charge is minus one, because that is the difference between the number of the proton and also electrons. And since the electron is more than the proton, it means the charge is minus one. Let's check it out. Yay! Let's continue to the next question. Last question. <laughs> it has no atomic symbol, but we still have um, the essential number here. The mass number, the charge, and we need to find out the atomic number. Now, the atomic number is the number of proton inside the nucleus. We have 5 seconds to answer. Alright, what is your answer? Well, the answer is 1. Because we have one proton here. Let's check the answer. Yay! Great! Now, this is how the path simulation works. Wow! You can actually try more games here or learn about the symbol and also build an atom. Yay! Happy exploring! And one more thing before the lesson ends. I'd like um, to go back to this with the knowledge that now you have um, you can go wherever you choose to go so please choose wisely and don't forget to do the quiz see you bye thank you students for going through the video with me amazing isn't it despite the size and it builds the universe Hope you do well with your quiz. See you later!